as I was entering a restaurant yesterday, late yesterday afternoon, there was a young man who was following me, and he was talking about Prescott, Prescott. If you're not from Prescott, you're from Prescott. If you're from, <laughs> if you live here, it's Prescott. Anyway, uh, he was talking to a companion and telling them, he said, I don't know what it is about Prescott, but it's a magical town, a magical community. I thought, you know, this young man has heart. It was so amazing to hear someone, you know, talk about Prescott that way. And I think most of us felt that way, you know, <clears throat> when we learned about Prescott and moved here. And then this morning, interestingly, you know how the synchronicity worked. Um, I think it was National Geographic sent a email and talked about the most um, how do they phrase it? The happiest cities to live in. And they didn't mention Prescott because they don't know about us, but they mentioned Fort Collins, where my grandkids lived. I thought, lived, I thought what an interesting, you know, connectivity from Fort Collins, Colorado. They also mentioned Boulder and Prescott. <laughs> I don't know how they determine the happiest city to live in, because my experiences with Fort Collins has not been so happy, actually. <laughs> uh, it's, but anyway, I just I'm just bringing it up because of the synchronicity between the two towns. But I was so touched with that young man, you know, talking about Prescott being such a magical community and magical town. So this morning I'm talking about Agni Yoga, the teaching of the heart. I will never forget the day a student told me that she absolutely unequivocally did not have the ray of love wisdom in her ray equipment. My response could not reach her consciousness. But today I want to make something very clear in answering this question. Does the second ray of love wisdom reside in everyone's heart? <laughs> and the answer is, yes, of course it does. And this is why our solar system is a love wisdom system. When that outpouring energy of the love wisdom ray comes, which is the doctrine of the heart, then everything that is created by him, in him, is made from this substance of love wisdom. We cannot escape it. In biblical test, text we read in the beginning was the word what is the word the word is love wisdom see the love wisdom ray so we are little atoms just little atoms in his body as all of the cells in our own body are part of us <coughs> we are part of him when we go against that current of love wisdom, then we are sick. We are miserable because we are contradicting our true self. In the early part of the 20th century, there was an American Indian tribe that was disposed to the concept of the heart. In 11 years, they were wiped out by their enemies. They could no longer fit into their environment. They perished because they were one-sided. They used only their love, not their intellect 
and love. We are told that if they were innocent, then in the future, those that in the future they will rule those who killed them. See how that works? But there was an imbalance in that tribe. The people we are killing are those who are going to kill us in the future. Whatever you sow, you will reap. If you kill people, they will kill you. Maybe it will not happen in this life, but we have millions of incarnations to see it fulfilled. See, right, right there, that gives us answers. It's not logic. Certain situations in the world today, certain events that are taking place now, we cannot find the answers as to why. Even our logic and our analyzing mind cannot find the answers. But the teaching of karma gives us the answer. As you sow, so you shall reap. When we are talking about the heart, we are not minimizing the value of the mind. The mind and the heart, we know this, must be together. According to the great masters, divinity is training his mind. Divinity is training his love. Divinity is training his will power. His will power, the, these three elements that he is training himself in, this is very interesting, is being created by the three solar systems. A trinity. See, a trinity but one God, light, love, and power. These are the three aspects, the different facts or the different facets of the one entity. See how that works? So when that young woman unequivocally said, I have no love, wisdom, no ray too in my mechanism, that is not, that is absolutely not possible. If that is a reality for her or anyone else, and they are devoid of love, then they are going against the flow of their true self. If you've ever been around anyone who is all mind or mostly mind, they're in today's psychology, they're called narcissists, right? And all kinds of other little issues. So, we've gone through the training of the mind or the intellect, which was the previous solar system. Now, in this solar system, we are learning love, wisdom. Once the integration of mind and heart take place, then we are, humanity will move into the next solar system, which is willpower. You know, God help us if we do not have the fusion of heart and mind when we, as a humanity, move into that next solar system, willpower. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I was reading about a Buddhist monk who said, I am going to end these incarnations and no longer come back to this world. He said, I do not want to come back to this earth when it's going to be polluted. What good is it in returning? <clears throat> well, the news of the day is that we don't have a choice. As long as we go against the heart, as long as we go against the heart, we are going to reincarnate again and again and again. So, we must recognize our presence in everything in the trees, in the bushes, in little drops of water, 
even in the beautiful blue sky, which we have today, this beautiful blue sky. What's, we must see the diamonds in them. What beautiful things that we have. So to do this, we must increase our sensitivity, our love nature, our heart nature to appreciate them. I have friends who renew their energies by going into nature for occasional weekends and vacations or just to walk your dog. Each says when they are in nature, they become enveloped in peace, in a calmness that heals their soul. To me, they are like little nature spirits that embrace all of nature with their heart. And in return, they experience cosmic love. Nature loves them. The animal and nature kingdom trust them. So we must learn to recognize our presence in every living form. In the Bible, it is written that God is love, that our God is love. Our God is that ray of love wisdom. In each of us, there is a little piece of that ray. This is the doctrine of the heart. This is the magnet within us that created our bodies, that creates groups, that creates nations, and everything, and gives us this feeling of heart. This is why I said earlier, when we go against that current, then we are sick. So what does the heart mean? The greatest power of that peace within us is a navigator, that we actually have a navigator inside of our whole human mechanism that's called a magnet, and this magnet leads us to the cosmic heart. Each of us has a cosmic magnet within our heart, just like certain birds and dolphins have magnets. So we are migrating toward the cosmic home, see, our home. Every time we do something, we speak something, we think something that is against the direction of that cosmic magnet within us, it creates all kinds of unimaginable miseries in your life. We could talk so much about this or have a, a discussion about it. When, when people come to you with their problems and they're angry, they're disgusted, they're frustrated, they say, I don't ever want to incarnate on this planet again. What are you going to do? Are you going to sympathize with them? Uh, commiserate with their problems and and feel sorry for them or are you going to sit down and talk to them about life and nature and the heart and love and how we're all just little cells in his body see in I could go I could really get into this. <laughs> But that won't uh, get me to the end of the talk. But this is something to really think about, even about you know, your, your own life, these problems that you have. Why don't people like you? Why do you seem to alienate people? They start out to be your friends, and maybe a year or three or five years later, they don't want to be around you anymore and you talk to your sympathizer friend who says, don't pay any attention to them. You know, they're stupid. We can't do that. When we think <clears throat> with that kind of um, false understanding, we separate ourselves from the magnet of love. We're separating ourselves from 
the law of responsibility. If you find yourself basically friendless, then you need to sit down and take a look at what's in your heart. What is the content of your heart? And then if you have the, the strength and the um, wisdom and the determination to do something about it, you will find in time, because it does take time, by practicing the virtues that the teaching gives us, pretty soon that old friend is going to come back into your life. Or pretty soon that family member or family members will come back into your life almost magically. Not because they've changed, but now you have cleaned off that magnet and now you're pulling those family members or those friends back into your life because you transformed yourself. See, it's not them, it's us. So now I've had my say, okay. <laughs> and our unimaginable miseries are now disappearing. In other words, health and happiness depend on our orientation, our harmonization with the cosmic magnet, that cosmic magnet that is within us. Anytime we shift away from that direction, if it, that cosmic direction, if it is physical, if we shift away from that cosmic direction, then we create physical problems. If it is emotional, for example, hatred or separatism, I am great and they are nothing. It creates emotional problems. Now here's a statement that I found in the teaching many, many, many years ago, and boy did I bulk. And it is, we are programmed. Anyone who is really immersed in the Aquarian age is going to fight against such a phrase that we are programmed. It's no different than when I began studying astrology and we had all of these statements, you are, if you're an Aries, you are this. If you are a Taurus, you are that. If you are a Gemini, you are jack of all trades and master of none. And I thought, no, this is wrong, this is wrong. You know, we don't want to be put into a compartmentalized statement that we can't get out of. So I just, in that regard, the astrology, I decided they're talking about common man. You know, they're just born in and then they leave and then they come back and they're born in, the next sign and then they come and they're not evolving, they're not changing their consciousness. So how does that go back to this phrase, we are programmed? As I began to understand and discover what it meant, it gave me a sense of peace because this is, programming means that we have within our nature an archetype of what our full potential can blossom into. It's, it's not like being in a caste system or it's not like being into a third world country and you can't get out. It is, what it means is that if you can align yourself to the programming or that little chip within us, that we then begin to grow into the archetype of beauty and goodness and righteousness and joy and freedom that we begin to tap into talents that we didn't realize that we had. We begin to unfold in a way that, that we can radiate the beauty of the great ones that we are so drawn to. 
As we unfold the programming of this little chip, we expand our consciousness. We go toward that greater light. We feel with greater knowledge and wisdom, greater love, light, and power. So we want that kind of programming. Not those idiot little statements that, and I love astrology, so I'm not bashing it. I mean, I truly love astrology, esoteric astrology. We have to get away from the, um, the past, you know, our past transgressions, our past misunderstandings, our past hatred, our past this and that and really tune our instrument, fine tune our physical, emotional, and mental body to that little chip. And the minute we fine tune our consciousness to that chip is when we're going to unfold, expand our consciousness, go toward greater light and love, knowledge and wisdom. So who is going to tell us that we are going in the right or wrong direction? As much as I value the work of psychiatrists and psychologists and psychotherapists, they're as human as we are. They just have a little more education. What we really need to do is to listen to our heart. The, our heart is going to tell us whether we are going in the right or wrong direction. It's not analysis. It's our heart. Listen to it. If we do not listen to our heart, you know what's going to happen? Is that we eventually lose our path. This is right straight out of the Ageless Wisdom teaching, that if we do not listen to our heart, we will eventually lose our path. And I've been on this planet long enough to know the validity, you know, the absolute infinite truth of this statement. This is why we have teachers to remind us of the heart. We have a whole book written by Master Moria called Heart. Torquem has written a book called The Flame of the Heart. If you open up any index in any of the books he wrote, you will find in that index the word heart. That's, and he's written over a hundred books. So the heart's got to be important. They, that love, wisdom, ray has to be important for us to recognize and to realize the heart is so important. And in that realization, it's like, how can I, I wish I had the words to explain it, that chip that is part of our being will plug in to the great cosmic heart and will wake up, will become alive, we become vital human beings. Our teachers remind us of the heart so we will not lose our path, our direction. We will not lose our light and our direction if we find and value our earthly teacher. The teacher is there reminding us of that little chip in our heart. If we do not listen to our heart, we will eventually lose ourselves. Groups lose themselves if they do not listen to the group heart. Imitation, pretension, and hypocrisy are words that mean you are not really living the reality within you. The reality within you is you. Now here's a quote from Heart, the book Heart Sutra 3. 
Whether people call the heart the abode of the Elohim or the synthesis of synthesis. Sorry, <laughs> these are hard words to pronounce. <laughs> the synthesis of syntheses. <laughs> Say that ten times. <laughs> so whether we call the heart the abode of Elohim or the synthesis of syntheses, the heart remains the focus. Even those who only see the heart in terms of its lower physiological functions regard it with care. And continuing on with this quote from Hart, how much more deeply then should a person listen to the heart when he knows about the magnet and the silver thread? That is why the teacher draws you away from everything narrowly physical. So as to remind us, remind you through each organ about the spiritual world. He says it's a festival for us, capital U, S. It is a festival for us when pure thinking is transferred into the sphere of the invisible existence. People should be led into the abode of the Elohim with great urgency, as if danger were on their heels. You can recognize that the chosen ones are on the path of the invisible world have become real, it has become real and accessible to them. You may then notice that the consciousness is growing and the very organs of the body are being transformed, nourished as they are by the link to the hierarchy. And in the same book, Sutra 388, it reads, the teaching of the heart is so needed for the life of the future. Otherwise, how will you cross the boundaries of the worlds? The people of encyclopedic knowledge and of higher positions remain in the lower strata of the world unless their heart is aflame. The boundaries of the worlds is an expression which refers to the spheres of existence or the planes of existence. The various dimensions through which humanity must pass to come in contact with a more abundant life. Do you see what is happening to humanity, to us? Let's just take us by example. At least myself and the people I know well, we are becoming so mentally polarized by telecommunication, by TV, by our electronic devices, our internet, our iPad, our iPhone, our this and that, that we are moving away from the currents of the heart. See, we read, we read, we read, we're gathering knowledge, we're gathering information, but are we filtering it through our heart? I think not, and this is why the world is becoming, as I see it, objectively anyway, angry, you know, disappointed. Uh, they're losing hope for the future. And this is why it's more important than ever before that we return to the teaching of the heart and then balance heart and mind. So pull out that book, The Heart, you know, in the Agni Yoga series or The Flame of the Heart, heart by Torgum Seridarian. Read word for word, think about it, assimilate it, practice it. The teaching of the heart will prepare humanity to advance toward future possibilities.
I think that without the teaching of the heart, humanity will exterminate itself. It is important that the teachers, the leaders of the world, prepare the teaching of the heart and spread it all over the world as a foundation of good will, harmony, cooperation, sense of responsibility, and perhaps more important, most importantly, is right human relations. In such a way, we are going to create a safe world. Let us not become trapped or caught in the web of negative people, negative thinking, narcissists, uh, conceited individuals. Let us not be distracted hey, by these types of human beings because they're going in the wrong direction. They're going in the wrong direction. We want to create a safe world. Like I tell my four dogs, my beautiful little, little Shelties, you are safe here. You live, in a, <clears throat> you live in a safe world. Their world is my home. I tell them you are always be protected and taken care of. As parents, we create an environment where our children feel safe. Our love keeps them safe. They know we will be there for them and not abandon them, just like the great ones who remind us that they will protect us. In the introduction, introduction to Leaves of Moria's Garden, the great Himalayan sage tells us, I will cover you with my shield if you but tend to your labors. And then he goes on to say, this is, you'll recognize this immediately if you're familiar with that book. He said, I am your bliss. I am your smile. I am your joy. I am your rest. I am your strength. I am your valor. I am your wisdom. He also says, you and we, here together in spirit. Also, he says, strengthen the awareness of our presence in your life. Invoke our power for your deeds. Rejoice, you who have understood. Live a full life rich in experience. <clears throat> he goes on to say, whatsoever your doubts, we will dispel them in life. But hearken, we shall manifest miracles in your days, but discern. Let your heart be your judge and faith your power. Be content with the true indications whispered in your spirit. My friends, you chose to take a happy road leading to me. You must teach others to search for my world, the world of the knowing spirit. Persist and open the gates to the hearts that seek. I will know when the time has come for the gates to be opened. <clears throat> Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. The teaching of the heart in the ancient world was called sun knowledge. Sun knowledge. In this definition was indicated the fieriness, the sun-like quality, the centrality of the heart. It is impossible to cross the boundaries of the worlds without being equipped and charged with the fire, with the sun, without focusing within your own center, the heart center. 
the teacher, the leader, must always emphasize compassion and love and relationships and must always remind people that the self, the true self, the capital S self, the universal self is in every heart. When you are acting against anybody, you are acting against yourself. Hey, this is very important. This past weekend during the anniversary talk, I said that the brain is the switchboard of the mind, that it is a mechanism. The brain is a mechanism. The heart is not. The heart is a piece hey, of the one self. The electric heart behind the heart is one with the cosmic heart. But most have not yet realized this fact. Slowly, slowly, the heart is opening. The opening heart means that it is becoming sensitive to what? The planetary heart. To the solar heart, to the cosmic heart, that it is slowly developing. So as that sensitivity increases, we become increasingly inclusive. But the mind, intelligence, is an instrument, a mechanism that we can use for anything. We can use it positively, we can use it negatively, we can change it, but the heart, this is what the teaching says, the heart is unchangeable. The heart knows everything. There is something very interesting, even sad to me. A person tells me that they have a problem, and they do want to solve that problem. They are going to, they say they're going to consider this and that and about how to solve their situation. And they try to solve it mentally. They'll go to the books or to a therapist or to someone outside of the realm of the heart. They go into their mind, they begin to analyze the situation, their problem. Then they solve it, they think they solve it, and they say, I'm going to do this or that. But what the actual, the reality of the effect is, is that now what they're doing is mechanical. With the result of being a pretense. Instead, they imitate they this and that. They become a master imitator. They say, I love you. I am your friend. But then the next minute, they turn against you. They attack you. They threaten to take you to court. They tell your secrets, your confidences, and they betray you. I've had so many experiences with this type of person. What happens is such a person moves into a very dangerous place they end their life as a unfolding human soul. They're going in the wrong direction. The heart knows that you are lying. You are not speaking the truth. And then conflict happens between the heart and the mind and this conflict creates strain in your aura, in your nervous system, in your centers, in your ganglia, and eventually it penetrates into your body. When I sign a letter, an email letter, or any kind of letter, I like to sign it, Love Jolene. When I sign my letters like that, I infuse the image of the heart, the cosmic heart into that signature. For me, it is not a mechanical signature. It is a reminder of the energy of love has gone into that letter. Sometimes I get letters from men, men especially, probably because I'm a woman, but sometimes women too. They just sign their name. And if electronic email letters are not cold enough, and you just sign your name, 
and nothing else, I wonder where is their heart? Where's the heart in their letter? Are they afraid to sign their letter with love? The heart knows. Well, I'm going to end there. We've covered a lot this morning. It's kind of heavy, but it's so real, so valuable. You know, and if for nothing else, think about those quotes that Master Moria gave us from heart. And one of them was from uh, Sutra 3 uh, in the heart book. And then another was from Leaves of Moria's Garden, Volume 1, Sutra 1, and Sutra 15. They were not in this alone. And we are being watched.